So in August of this year, at the end of August, marks three years that I've been married and I've been meaning to do a bridal tutorial. If you don't know, I was a bridal makeup artist for like three, almost four years. I stopped when I moved over here to Florida, but I have extensive experience in creating bridal looks. So I'm gonna link you down to my original bridal tutorial that I did on myself and I was watching that and I was like, hmm, I do my bridal makeup a little bit differently now. So this is going to be a tutorial of how I'd do my makeup if I were getting married in 2023. I am also going to link the bridal tutorial that I did last year and it was so good. I just rewatched it so it could be fresh on my mind. And in that one, being a makeup artist was a little bit more fresh in my head. So I gave a ton of tips as to products that I used in my kit, what I would do for different skin types and all of that, classical bridal makeup versus trendy bridal makeup. I cover all of that in last year's video. I definitely recommend that trying that out because today is a little bit more based on how I'd do my own makeup. So I have a little bit more trendy techniques, but if you're looking for more of a classical-ish kind of bridal makeup look, especially one that is inclusive of different skin types and different ways that I do things, tips and tricks like that for specific bridal makeup, check that video out. But today's still gonna be a really, really good one. So, hello, that's too close. Let's start off with our prep. We want to have the skin nice and hydrated, whether you have dry or oily skin. So I'm going to use the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. It's light, but still pretty intensely hydrating. I think I used the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream in my original wedding makeup, and I've decided in 2023 that would be a bit too heavy for me. But no matter what, no matter your skin type, you have to make sure you're properly taking care of the skin before makeup. I'd even recommend if you are a bride that's getting married this year, first of all, congratulations. Second of all, experiment with different face masks and sheet masks before your wedding day, and then have one save that you like the most to put on before you get your wedding makeup on so that your skin has the highest level of hydration. And then I'm going to hydrate my lips with a little bit of the Lawless Forget the Filler Plumping Lip Mask in Juicy Watermelon. Mm, this one literally tastes like a Jolly Rancher. Not tastes, but smells exactly like a Jolly Rancher. So I'm gonna let that sit on and hydrate on my skin for a few minutes and I'll be back. For primer, I'm going to be doing two different ones. Whatever primer you use really does depend on your skin type. For me, I'm gonna start off with something hydrating. So this is the Makeup Forever Hydra Booster Primer. It's just really simple in that it hydrates the skin. And it also is really nice and thin. I'm not overloading my skin with this since I do have moisturizer pretty freshly put on, but we still like that additional layer. I do not recommend SPF for your wedding day because it has potential to flash back your makeup as well as can make your foundation peel or your makeup on top. And then the second primer that I'm using, this is a pretty new one for me, but I wore this the other day and I really liked it in a sweaty situation. This is a one size secure the sweat primer. I can't say 100%, this isn't factual, but I did feel like the first time that I wore this, I went to an event that was pretty hot, and even though I did still sweat, I feel like this did help the makeup last longer through the sweat, and most weddings are in a pretty warm environment if they're outside and in the traditional time of year of weddings. So I'm just going to put some on my upper lip, my chin, my nose, and then along the hairline where I get a lot of additional sweat. I don't want to layer too much product on my skin if I can help it, but skin prep is everything. Now, foundations. I would still use Dior Air Flash if I could, but Air Flash is discontinued. So I'm gonna go for one of my favorite liquid foundations that's super expensive. Tip, just get a sample of this before you buy it. This is the La Mer the Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. This has a similar finish to the Dior Air Flash in liquid form, so that's why I'm gonna use this, and it lasts a really long time. So my favorite way to apply foundation is to use my finger 
to spread it out across the skin this way you're not wasting product and it's easier not to over apply as well and I'm gonna take a damp sponge this one is from Real Techniques and I'm just going to pat the product in I would suggest on your wedding day not to apply too thick of a layer of foundation. You just don't want it to look heavy. You don't want it to feel heavy. You want it to be comfortable, but you still want enough coverage to where it looks nice in photos. But worst case scenario, get a good photographer. Tell them it is a-okay to edit a little bit if they need to Photoshop that. I am noticing with the one size Secure the Sweat, it did peel just a little bit, but nothing to super off put me but I figured with the type of product like that that it would happen it's not fully agreeing with the La Mer foundation so you know what worst case scenario I'm skipping now on the one size but I wanted to test it again today and I really do feel like the first time that I wore it I used the Guerlain foundation and it worked so nicely with that foundation I did not notice any peeling get a little extra down the center of the nose and then again, most of the blending is already done. You're just gonna use the sponge to pat it in. If you do have the opportunity to try this foundation, I really recommend it. It's a shame it's so dang expensive as it is, but for my wedding, I'd use it right now in 2023. It's a good one. Okay, eyebrows. I'm going to use a very fine eye pencil. This is from M Cosmetics. It's the Fine Liner Brow Pencil in Light Taupe. I don't want a color that's too dark since my brows are pretty naturally dark. On most clients, I typically use a powder in the eyebrows. I feel like it gives a more timeless natural look. Just doesn't look as harsh. But this brow pencil is really fine so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it and pretty much just draw in my eyebrows. So I'm pushing the brow hairs down and I'm going to fill in my arch because we don't want that looking sparse in photography. What makes bridal makeup different than just everyday makeup is you do have to consider a lot of factors like longevity and photography is a huge thing. You want to look great in person as well, but makeup pulls much different in photography. You lose a lot of the makeup, so you have to think of areas that you want to apply enough depth so that it doesn't get washed out in the photos. And eyebrows is one of those things that's really important to get a little bit of extra color in there. But brows are something that are just trendy in general. So you wanna find a happy medium of how you like to wear your brows, but if you like them super trendy, like a feather brow, in a few years, you're gonna look back and be like, oh, that did not look great. Unless you don't really mind, but I like to find typically with bridal looks, a happy medium between trendy, but still classic. And then to set the brows, I'd probably use Too Faced eyebrow gel, but I want to use something a little bit lighter because the Too Faced does give too trendy of a look. So I'm just going to use the M Cosmetics brow gel. This one gives a good level of hold without being too heavy in the brows. So how I'd go about the trendy fluffier brow look without being too trendy would be one, to trim your brows, which... I did not do, but make sure you get them professionally done a few days, probably like a week before the wedding, and then brush the inner parts of the eyebrows up. This is if you want a fluffier look. You might just want to do more of a classic brow, and then go diagonally with this brow gel. And I picked this one specifically because it's just not as heavy, so I don't need to worry about them looking electrocuted. So something like this is how I would go about my eyebrows. I'm going to take just a little bit of concealer or foundation, take a small synthetic fiber brush, and I'm going to clean up under the brows, especially since I did not get my brows done prior to getting married. So I'm going to fake it till I make it and clean up on a lot of of my brides when I did bridal makeup. I wouldn't do this step. It would depend on how they normally wore their brows and if they got their brows done recently, the look that they were going for. But a lot of times I did get a lot of requests for just a natural bridal look from women who didn't really wear that much makeup. So on clients like that, most of the time I would skip this step. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that extra concealer on the inner corner of the eyes here because this is where the eyes harbor darkness and you definitely don't want to catch that in photography. So we're blending that in here. And then to make my eyeshadow stay long all day, I'm going to use the Jaclyn Cosmetics First Base Eyeshadow Primer. This is my favorite eyeshadow primer. So I'm going to use this. I like it because I feel like it does help blur the eyelid and it does help, in my opinion, make makeup last longer. So I'm just going to use my finger to blend that out. And then for eyeshadow, my favorite brand, especially for mattes, is Viseart. I use Viseart in my bridal kit, and if I were getting married today, I'd pull their palettes as well for my look. So I'm going to start off with the classic Viseart Neutral Mattes. You can get it in a palette that's like this. It's more affordable as well, but this is just what I have in my collection. I love their mattes because they're super blendable, and this has every shade you're going to need matte-wise. So to start, I'm going to take a cream matte shade and press it underneath my brows to highlight under here. Be careful about having too much shimmer. I learned this when I went to makeup school, but satin is really great for mature skin and for photography because it doesn't reflect too much, but it still isn't completely flat. I mean, flat shades do look great in photography for shadows and whatnot, but a satin is also really flattering. And then with too much shimmer, just be a little careful when the you know light reflects that, but I'm just highlighting under here. I know it looks a little messy. And then the secret is building and blending. I'm gonna start off with this shade and I'm gonna put this in my crease. In the video I did last year, I did more of like a elongated eye look because that was my rendition of something classic but still trendy. On me today, this is how I would do it if I were getting married. I'm just starting off with the light peach shade. And I want to stay pretty neutral but have a blushing cheek. So I'm gonna go into the shade next to it and start building up the blend. And every time you add a darker color, you take up less space on the eyelid with it. So I have my transition colors down. I'm going to go into a smaller blending brush. And I'm going to take this shade right here because it's nice and neutral. And I'm going to start off by patting it on the outer, like, third of my eyelid. So place the color down. And then I'm circling it in the outer corner and then with whatever's left in my brush, I'm finding my crease like so. Then blend out a little bit. I'm not going as cat eye as I did in last year's tutorial since I actually did use this eyeshadow palette as well. But last year's tutorial, I did an all matte look and I don't think I do that for this year on myself. So I'm just getting really basic neutral colors down, taking an even smaller brush. And then I'm going to mix these two together and I'm going to just very delicately and carefully circle that in the outer corner. This is the best palette for any neutral mattes you're ever going to need, especially with performance. They do so much of the work themselves. This is a great Viseart palette to start off with because it's always going to be the base of any eyeshadow look that's not colorful. You'll have what you need. All of those basic staple shades and making sure the crease is blended out. Now it does depend on the eye shape, but typically a background of this on the eyes is very flattering in photography for most eye shapes. Now on the eyelid, I do want to have a little bit of pop. I'm going to take the Petits 4 from Vizier in Bullion and I'm going to take the lightest shade and apply that all over my eyelid. I think, you know, on my wedding day, I want to keep it neutral but still more on the glam side, which is why I'm going into this shade. And Vizier, their strong suit, if you ask me, is not shimmers, but they do have a couple palettes where they have really beautiful shimmers and this is one of them. So I'm just gonna do that. Do you see how that brightens up my eyes? That's what I'm going for. A champagne on the lid is gorgeous. And I'm going back 
and redefining the outer corner because I still want to keep depth in the area. Now this is what I do differently this year. I've always used like a black pot liner, but I've been very into shadow liner and shadow liner is very flattering and not too harsh. It's great in photography. So I'm sticking with the black in this palette, which again, Viseart has such good quality. I highly recommend this. Black for eyeliner. It's a great quality shadow to use as eyeliner. And I'm just going to press this along my lash line. And I'm going to keep it thinner than I have in most years. If you saw my bridal tutorial that I did on my wedding, I had a pretty thick eyeliner. Nowadays, I think I'd keep it thinner. And then in last year's tutorial, I did not do a wing. But on myself, I've just always loved a wing. So I'm going to do a wing. But when I did bridal makeup, I didn't do wings unless requested. Because this is not a classic thing to do. Maybe like a baby wing, but a wing of this size is not like classic bridal makeup. But on me, I love it. So I'd be the bride that requested a wing. And the great thing with using eyeshadow is it's actually easier and quicker to get the wing. And on some brides, I even use brown eyeliner. For me, I definitely would want black. I'd want that definition, but sometimes brown liner is gorgeous on a wedding day. And then I think I want a little bit more glimmer shimmer on the eyelid. So where's the shade I want to use? So I'm gonna take something that is long lasting and a little extra glimmery. This is the Jones Road Sparkle Wash in Midas. This is gonna go perfectly over the shadow and add that extra level of dimension that I would want. Now from a makeup artist's word of advice, glitter is not always the best for photography. It can look a little funky on the eyelids, but for me personally, I don't care. I'd want the glimmer on my eyelids no matter what. And this glimmer is pretty fine, so it's not too chunky or anything. But just with photography, sometimes the way that the flash is or the way that the sun hits, it can make the eyelid look uneven with the reflex. So you just gotta be careful. This is a good one to use for photography because it is pretty fine. But yeah, I think I definitely want a little bit of glimmer. I forgot about this. I do this before the eyeliner, but that's okay. We can go back over with the eyeshadow, but no, that's what I do. I definitely would want a little extra something something. Then I'm going to take a makeup wipe and I'm going to clean up any fallout that might have happened. And then I'm also going to clean up the shadow, kind of sharpen it a bit. This is a trendier technique, but on my eye shape, I find it to be pretty flattering. Let's work on the under eyes. For concealer, I'm using one of my all-time favorites, the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. It has a great amount of coverage and it looks nice and smooth. And I don't want to do too much just because we don't want it to be too thick or heavy on the under eyes, but I am gonna put a little extra on the cheeks. I said I don't want it to be too heavy and then I layered all of this on. <laughs> but what I like to do to make the look more cohesive is I like to take excess concealer and apply it to center of my face, to the cheek area, because then it doesn't make the concealer so obvious. It's more fluid with the makeup look. So I'm using the sponge to press it in. This is great because it also picks up extra product. Then I'm gonna use a brush to kind of get in the creases and crevices that are a little harder to get products into. I'm gonna let that dry down naturally by itself. And I'm going to cream contour for a little bit more structure to my face. This isn't always necessary depending on the look that you're doing, but I like a more structured look and I love this color. So I'm using the Makeup by Mario Light Medium Soft Sculpt Stick. But I'm gonna try and keep it pretty natural. So I'm gonna use a Morphe M536 brush, gonna go directly on the product and then put it on my face so that it comes out a little bit more blended and doesn't push the product around and move it since I'm a little worried about that one size product. But you see how this gives a little extra sculpt? 
and you don't want to put too thick of a layer down as well because if where you're getting married is hot and heavy, you don't want that hot and heavy makeup. So I'm trying to keep the layer pretty thin, but this is going to help the bronzer grab onto it and will help the bronzer last longer as well. So as long as you set with powder, that's going to help longevity. Then I'm going to sculpt a little bit underneath here as well. The sculpted look, remember, is technically trendy, so you want to be careful with that. Sometimes like the soft, rounded, feminine look is really nice for weddings as well. I'm going to take the product on my ring finger. And then I'm going to just go straight down. I'm going to get just a little bit more. I'm going to contour my nose a little bit. This is going to look really nice in photography. This is also something that's trendier, but it's what I would do on myself. And I'm going to take a small brush and just blend that in. Not going too far out like this. You don't want to blend sideways. You want to blend up and down so that it continues to look natural and it's nice to get a little bit of that color down here as well to give a more full lip. And then we're going to set with powder. I personally for events like to set with a lot of powder. How much powder you use really does depend on your skin type and the climate. But I like a lot of powder because I like how blurring it is. I'm going to use the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder in Cherry Blossom. I think the pink color right here, which is very subtle by the way, is fun because I'm going to use a pinky blush. So I'm going to start off with most important pressing that onto the under eye. And if you want to use a cream blush, put the cream blush on before this step as well. I'm skipping out on cream blush though it would be good for longevity. Then I'm also going to take a little bit of the powder on the tip of my sponge and I like to do this. This can be overkill, but honestly, I like the way that I look. So I don't recommend it for everybody, but if it makes me feel good, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and then I just immediately take a brush and blend it away, but I like the look of that brighter area under there. Oops, and then we're already ready for the under eyes of eyeshadow before I finish. So I'm going to take Take this shade and this shade to start off, and I'm gonna focus it on the outer two thirds of the lower lash line. I want this look to be dark in the outer corners and then nice and bright on the inner corners. So I'm keeping the contour under here pretty light. And then I'm going in with the darkest shade now, and then I'm keeping it tight to the lash line as well as not too far in. Now if you want to do like a dramatic look or if it's a late night wedding or you're a glam girl, oh my gosh, smoke this out underneath the lash line. That would be gorgeous. But I'm not going to do that on myself today. And then this is just what I like to do. I'm going to take the eyelid shade that I use that's shimmery and I'm going to pop it right underneath the tear duct right here for the reflection in photographs to make my eyes appear a little bit larger. Now I'm going to set with bronzer. I'm going to use the Scott Barnes Soleil Bronzer in Bondi Beach. I don't know, I really like this one, so I'm gonna use it. I love the toasted look that it gives. So I'm just gonna lightly set that right over my Makeup by Mario contour, and this is going to set that for longevity. It's also going to give that sun-kissed look as well. I really love this bronzer. It's underrated in my opinion. Not a lot of people like it, but I love it. Get underneath the chin as well. I never hear anybody talking about this bronzer, but I think it's amazing. And then I know I'm really heavy with the powder. I personally, on myself, prefer powder for special events and occasion. Now for blush, I knew I wanted to use an hourglass blush. Those are my favorites, and I want it to be pinky. I'm looking at what I have here. This is a little bit more peachy, but it'll be fine. This is Soft Flush from Hourglass from their Ambient Lighting Edit Blush and Glow Palette. So I just wanted an Hourglass blush because the way that they look on the skin is so seamless. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna apply it right to the apple of my cheeks, not doing anything too trendy or popular here. I want that flush. 
show through. And nobody does a blush better than Hourglass, in my opinion. I probably would have preferred something a little bit more soft pink, but this is fine. Okay, so let's finish off with highlight. I want something that's pretty natural. So I'm going to use the Ilia Decades Daylight Highlighting Powder. This is one of my favorites because it just soaks into the skin beautifully. Using a Rare Beauty highlight brush. I'm not applying too much, just enough. So like when I turn, there's a little bit of shebang pow, but not too much, you know, shebang pow. Keep it quiet. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little bit on my nose because I feel like my nose could use a little bit more dimension. Taking a small pencil brush, flat pencil brush, and just popping this in the inner corner. Now, here is what I would do differently that I haven't talked about in any other video, but I've really been into an inner corner wing. I feel very confident with an inner corner wing. So if I were getting married today, I'm doing an inner corner wing. So let me show you how I do it. I just still use this eyeshadow for eyeliner and then a pencil brush and then just do it lightly. I don't want it to be too big because then that's too trendy. I do a big one when I go to like events and stuff, but for my wedding, I'd probably do it like miniature like this and that's it. And sometimes for longevity, I'd go over with a liquid liner over top after I map it out, but I want to keep it kind of soft. And like that's it. That's all I would do and I love how this just elongates the eyes. Now if you're truly getting married, make sure you are using waterproof mascara. I'm ill prepared. I'm not getting married so it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to use a good mascara. I'm going to pop on Fenty Beauty Hella Thick Mascara on my lower and upper lashes. And then off camera I'm also going to apply my Ardell Naked 420s. I'm telling you, if you are getting married, the Naked line from Ardell is the best. They are natural, they are not too much, they are not too trendy, they add just the perfect amount of fullness. So I'm gonna apply these and I will be back. Lashes are on, do you see how these are just not too crazy, but they add a lot of fullness. And then on the lips to lip line, I'm going to use Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. This has been my go-to lately. It's perfect for making the lips a little bit more voluptuous. So I'm going to overline in the center mostly, like this. And I personally, I know this is up for debate, but I like going over the cupid's bow, and then keep it a little closer on the outer part. And then for lips, I wanna go with something pink to bring out the blush. So I'm gonna use my all-time favorite lipstick, formula, not color, but formula, Blushing Dream from Charlotte Tilbury. And Charlotte Tilbury has the best tones of pink lipstick, if you ask me. And I think it looks pretty with the more cooler toned lip liner. And then to finish off, I'd need to set my face with something long lasting. So Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Setting Spray is my go-to. I literally used this when we got married. So I'm using it again still after all this time. All right, so here's the makeup look. Now with my hair down, I love it, it's so good. I would totally get married in a look like this. If I were getting married this year, I'd definitely go for the glimmery neutral eye look, the inner outer corner winged liner, the blushing a pink cheek. I love this look, oh my God. This is making me miss doing bridal makeup. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this bridal tutorial. If you are getting married this year, congratulations. I hope this video inspired you if you're doing your own makeup. And make sure you check out the last couple tutorials that I've done. Those also have some really amazing tips as well. And yeah, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.